What is up? This is Scott, and this tutorial is going to show you how to set up the NDI phone app for both iPhone and Android. We are doing it right now. If you produce YouTube content at your desk and you use a PC computer, you have come to the right place. I provide information in regards to software, YouTube strategy, and information on OBS Studios all the time at this channel. If you like what you hear, subscribe and click the bell for new video notification. Okay, so to recap, what we're doing here is we're going to install an application for both the iPhone and the Droid, and it's going to allow us to broadcast your live image over the Wi-Fi network into OBS so that you can record your phone as if it was a webcam, okay? As you probably are fully aware that a cell phone camera is way better than any kind of C922 or any other webcam on the market, this is the way to do it. It's cheaper, it's easy to set up, and it's fun. So at the end of this video, I'm going to show you how to use OBS's green screen or chroma key application so you can extract the background out of your image when you're using your phone. And that'll be at the end of this video, so stay tuned for that. All right, let's get into it. Okay, let's start with the iPhone. Go to your app store and do a search for N. D I and you want to look for this application okay download it it's gonna cost 10 bucks it's well worth the money because the software is extremely easy to use and it's pretty flawless okay now upon you installing it let's look at the parameters okay this is the first screen that you see when you open up the NDI application on your iPhone the most important parameter here is what you see in the upper left hand corner we have a quality versus speed basically what that means is that if you go all the way to the left you'll have high resolution but you'll have more of a delay of transmission which could be a problem when you're talking you may not have accuracy you know you may say something but your, your mouth may not move so you may have to take that into account I would recommend putting the slider sort of in the middle or a little bit towards the speed side that way you get zero or no latency and you get a pretty decent quality you're gonna to have to experiment with it there is the live slider basically that turns on and off the uh, broadcast and there is a gear to the right of that let's click that now and I'll show you some more parameters okay the next page in the NDI application is the name of the NDI app and so you type something in there that's a unique identifier so that when you are in OBS and you select the camera you'll know that it's correct so name put it make it your name or call it NDI cam or whatever uh, that way you can find it in OBS the enable audio switch basically turns on and off your audio. Now I would recommend that you turn that off because that reduces the amount of data being sent over the Wi-Fi connection and you may be able to squeeze some more quality out of it if you have a USB mic. So I would recommend turning that off and using an, a, a USB mic so that you get a, a, bit, a little bit better quality. The prevent ST or SL, that is a prevent sleep time button which is really smart to have because if you're making a big long video and you have the camera running for a couple hours it won't go to sleep on you and you won't lose a connection so turn that on and then tally flash means that when you turn the camera on a light comes on just to let you know that the camera is in use and then of course you have your feet per second I go with 29 I think it's better than 25 doesn't seem to be much of a difference in regard to data being sent over the network so go with 29 because it makes it a little bit easier and that is it those those are the only uh, you know parameters that you have to worry about it's what makes this application so great and it's worth the 10 bucks okay the next step is to set up OBS to accept this new live stream feed okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the browser and download a new plugin so that it can accept it okay so how do we do that we go into your browser and we type in NDI plugin I spelled that wrong P-L-U-G G-I-N hit enter and click the first link it is called the OBS NDI new tech NDI integration into OBS studios from the OBS studio forums okay click that and upon clicking that you get to the blue site yes my favorite color blue <laughs> and click the download button it's white okay and it's gonna take you to uh, github OBS is open source. A lot of the stuff is powered by GitHub here. And you, if you have a PC, I hope you do. If you're at this channel, you have a PC, Windows 10, you want to download and install the EXE file. All right, so download the EXE file, install that plugin. Now, upon you actually installing the plugin, go back into OBS, 
create a new scene, all right? Create a new scene and click and click the plus sign under sources and look for the end di source pl uh, uh, element, okay? <laughs> a source, I'm sorry, a source. Click the NDI source, hit OK. It's going to give you another set of uh, settings and you, you want to go and select the name of the NDI source. In my case, it's Scott Victor iPhone NDI cam. All right. And hit OK. And you are in business. You have to wait a second or two and there it is. It works. Yes. I love this application. It's well worth the 10 bucks. All right. Let's move on to Droid now. Okay, let's download the NDI application for Droid. Go to Google Play, which is play.google.com, and do a search for NDI. Hit search. And let's click the New Tech NDI app for Droid. And the first thing that you'll notice is that it only has three stars. The second thing you'll notice is that it's 20 bucks. Wow, three stars and 20 bucks. If you start digging into the comments, you start to realize that this application is a second thought for new tech. New tech really doesn't care or really isn't concerned so much about Droid phones. I recommend that you do not install or purchase new tech NDI for the Droid. So the question is, well, what can I use for Droid phones? Well, let's go back and hit the back key one time and look and see what we have available. Oh yes, it's the IP webcam. This one is free and it has one, two, three, four and one fourth stars and 87,000 people have downloaded this application for their Droid phone. Ladies and gentlemen, this is probably the solution that you wanna go with because it's got, look at that, look at all the five stars. 4.3 on average with 87,000, wow, that means it's quality. Now, the way this works is a little bit different. Basically what it does is when you install this app, what happens is it creates a web server, essentially, with an IP address, okay? And in OBS, you reference a page and enter in the, the IP, and the video is broadcast via that specific IP and shows you the video. It's pretty cool. It takes a little bit more setup, which I will show you in just a second, but I think it's well worth the free app and uh, all the positive remarks that are going on with the application. So let me show you how to set that up right now. It's not too bad. Let's dig into it. All right, let's go to Google Play. We will type in IP webcam. We will click IP webcam for download, click install, let it download the application to your phone. It will self install onto your phone again. And then we want to click open and we're good. Okay, go into video preferences and we want to allow IP webcam access to photos, media and files on your device. Hit allow to that. Allow IP webcam to take pictures and record video. Hit allow and IP webcam to record audio. Allow that as well. Okay, let's go into video preferences. At that point, I want you to go into video resolution and this is where you need to do a little bit of experimentation in regards to data rate versus lag. The higher the resolution, the uh, more the lag. So maybe start out at 640 by 480 and move up just to make sure that you've got the best performance with the plugin, okay? All right, go back to the main menu and I want you to scroll down to the very, very bottom and select start server. This is actually going to create the video feed for the first time. And um, it's going to generate an IP address that I want you to copy down on a piece of paper, all right? Uh, in this case, it's 192, 168, 168080, all right? So I want you to copy that number down on a piece of paper. We're gonna have to use that in OBS. Okay, go into your OBS program and select the source that you wanted to modify and click the plus sign under sources, hit add, and add a browser source to that scene, okay? Browser source. Now, name it anything you want. In this case, I'm going to name it just browser, which I believe is the default, and I'll hit okay, all right? Now, it gives you a second window with more parameters. This is important now. We want to highlight what exists there, which is the OBS project, and delete that, and we want to also... Uh, take the S out of HTTPS, but we want to copy the IP address 
that the uh, plugin gave us and add it in here, okay? So let's take the S out of the HTTPS and then we will add the IP address after the double slashes. So what was that? That was um, 192.168.1.60, I believe it was, yeah, 60.8080. Hit enter and what it's going to do is show you a scene window, a browser scene window, with some extra parameters that the plugin gives you, that the app gives you, that you can uh, experiment with, fairly cut and dry stuff. Um, but, but what I want you to do is go back into the settings, put a forward slash in the URL after the IP address, and type in V, I, D, E, O, and you are in business. Hit OK, and bam, now you have a video feed in OBS, and you can apply it to just about anything that you want in regards to YouTube, Twitter, and all that great stuff. Okay, now I'm going to use my iPhone as a webcam and show you how to do green screen with it. It's really not that bad. I'll be back in a flash with my setup. Okay, here we are with green screen setup behind me. Uh, first things first, what I'm going to do is go into OBS, and I'm going to uh, right-click on my NDI feed, okay? Right click and select filters. And I'm going to add a new filter by clicking the plus sign. I'm gonna click chroma key. And now uh, this is where you can adjust the uh, sort of the different parameters in regards to the sensitivity of it, uh, how far it wants to go. I kind of like to make myself just slightly semi-transparent uh, the smoothness at, sort of adds to the line of how where the green meets the uh, meets you, and so all these parameters are something that you can experiment with. Fairly cut and dry. It just takes a little bit of experimentation. When you're happy with what you see, um, you're good to go. I think I'll back down the similarity just a little bit. I'll hit close, and now as you can see, there's no more background. But you can see just a slight green edge. When I flick my hand, so you can start to see the green edge there, that means it's working. Now I will turn on a background media source, which is a movie. Let's see what that looks like. Yes. Welcome to the show. Woo. So as you can see, this is an NDI uh, broadcasting live video over Wi-Fi with a motion background, and it works beautifully. Now, if you're interested in another video that I made, simply click this link for multiple cameras in OBS using macros, and you can switch back and forth. I've been doing it in this video. I've noticed I've been going back and forth in different views. That'll teach you how to do that. Like this video, subscribe, and click the bell for new notification. I will see you at another video. Much respect to you, and take care.